Hello, you absolute legends. On the 25th of February 2022, Elden Ring was released. It was one of the most anticipated games of all time, and boy did it deliver. Almost immediately after release, it was already being proclaimed as one of the greatest games ever made. By all accounts, it truly is a masterpiece and a pinnacle of game design. Elden Ring takes Dark Souls to its next logical step, combining the heavy focus on mechanic-driven combat with a vast open-world landscape. Given that the difficulty level of Dark Souls combat requires an immense amount of calibration on the part of the developers for each encounter, this was a monstrous task. They needed every battle to be challenging, and yet not impossible. With the sheer amount of bosses and enemies sprawled across the lands between, I can't imagine how much effort went into planning enemy placement alone. The game is huge. I've put 65 hours into it myself and have just entered the capital, which apparently is still towards the beginning of the main quest line. Even those following walkthroughs appear to take 40 to 50 hours to finish the main storyline, if that's the only thing they were trying to do. So with that in mind, I was extremely curious how fast speedrunners would be able to get to the end and beat the final boss. We wouldn't know right away, however. The official leaderboards on speedrun.com were locked and wouldn't take submissions until March 25th. This is because when a new game is released, it takes some time to formulate the rules. Because Elden Ring is so vast, this was an unusually lengthy process. But for the most part, they figured out the rules, and when the leaderboards opened up, we were able to see what the official world record was. And it was shocking. Players were already able to beat the game in less than 30 minutes. This seems crazy, but apparently it's possible. And in this video, we will take a look at how it was done. It always impresses me how fast speedrunners can completely dismantle a game in order to reach the end. And Elden Ring is no exception. The strategy is already pretty amazing, and I really hope you enjoy. Okay, Legends, I have some very important questions for you. Do you like tasty snacks? Do you like squares? Do you like midday? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you need to grab yourself some chocolate bars from today's video sponsor, Midday Squares. Midday Squares produce really tasty bars that not only satisfy your cravings for something delicious, but they also come jam-packed with essential nutrients like protein, fiber, and omega-3. I've been struggling to get into shape, so what I've done is stack my fridge in my home gym with every advantage I could think of. Prepared meals, shakes, diet soda, and of course, midday squares. I use midday squares as an incentive to exercise by having one while I work out. Midday squares are a way better and healthier alternative to chocolate bars. And the best part is, if you use my link in the description, you'll get 15% off your order. Just click the link in the description. As previously mentioned, Elden Ring is huge, and as part of the main storyline quest, there are at least 12 bosses one must fight in order to reach the end. If you average that out, it would give you around 2 minutes to travel to each boss and defeat them if you want to finish the game in less than 30 minutes. At first glance, this seems impossible, and it is. But speedrunners don't have time to fight bosses, so they skip most of them. Sequence breaks, which are the act of circumventing a supposedly required part of the game, are generally performed by physically going through a barrier that is meant to be impassable. This can be done in countless different ways, and every game has their own unique examples of how these are done. In the case of Elden Ring, the biggest weapon speedrunners have are wrong warps. Basically, tricking the game into warping them to a location they were not meant to be, and therefore bypassing the imposed restrictions. Elden Ring uses the same game engine as Dark Souls, and wrong warping in Dark Souls has been done for years. So it's really no surprise that the same types of warps can be done in this most recent release. What is surprising, however, is just how easy wrong warping is. Wrong warping in Dark Souls was never the most sophisticated technique speedrunners use. This isn't exactly Zelda where you need minutes of frame-perfect setup, but Elden Ring takes things to an even simpler level. Not only is wrong warping in Elden Ring easier than ever done before, but it's so easy that people were doing it by accident, even casual players. For you see, Elden Ring is a broken game. Yes, it's a masterpiece, but there are a ton of exploits that probably should have been fixed. 
My own hypothesis is that the game is just so large and there is so much content that it was difficult to find and correct everything. In any case, there are two types of wrong warps that we need to understand. They are the map wrong warp and the unstable position wrong warp. Let's start with the map wrong warp. And in order for this to make sense, we need to know how the game works when it teleports the player to different locations. The Elden Ring world map is huge, and so the game breaks it up into smaller regions. Inside each region, the game has a list of coordinates that the player can spawn into, either by teleporting to a site of grace or invading another player. These two pieces of data, the region and the coordinates, are crucial. So let's say I use the map to teleport to another site of grace. The game starts the process of teleporting me to the new area. It first tells the game the region we are going to so that the region can be loaded. Loading the region takes time. It's a very small amount of time, but still there is a delay. Once the region is loaded, it gives the game the coordinates we want to go to inside that region. The game will then cross-check the coordinates given with the list of coordinates the game stores for that region. When it finds a match, it will send you to that location. This is also how the Memory of Grace works. The Memory of Grace is an item the player starts with that will teleport them to the last site of grace they rested at in exchange for all of their runes. The game obviously has to keep track of the last site of grace you rested at in order to teleport you there, but the process is still the same. When you use the Memory of Grace, the game starts the process of teleportation. It tells the game the region, then a short time later gives the coordinates. It matches those coordinates with an internal list and sends you to that location when the teleportation process finishes. This seems pretty straightforward, but what happens when you do both at the same time? A map teleport and a memory of grace teleport. Generally, one of two things will happen. You'll either teleport to the last grace you rested at, which was the result of the memory of grace, or you'll teleport to where you selected on the map, which was the map teleport taking place. However, sometimes if the timing is ever so perfect, you'll end up somewhere strange. You might spawn underneath the map and fall to your death, or you'll just end up in a different location entirely. This is the magical wrong warp in action. Here's how it works. First, the Memory of Grace is used, which starts a process of teleportation. The game checks the last site of grace you rested at, which contains information for both the region and coordinates. In previous Souls games, it wasn't possible to initiate another teleport process while the existing one was already going. This is because the teleport was accompanied by a player animation that prevented you from doing anything else. However, in Elden Ring, we have the map screen, which we are free to bring up at any time as long as we aren't in combat, even if we are currently performing an action. And this is what breaks the game, because while we are teleporting to the last side of grace, we can tell the game that we want to teleport to a different grace. Intuitively, you'd think this would start a new teleportation process to a new location, but that's not what happens. Instead, the new command piggybacks off the original teleportation process which has already started. For the wrong warp to happen, the timing needs to be precise. During a teleportation process, there is a period of time after the game has matched the coordinates before it actually sends you there, and it's this gap we need to take advantage of. For the next part to make sense, it's probably better we put it straight into context using the world record speedrun. In the Any% percent run, the first priority is getting to the final area of the game as quickly as possible, which is crumbling Faram Azula. The best way to get there is from a portal located at the Four Belfries. Players will initially make the journey on foot until they reach the Stormgate Grace, where they gain the Horse Torrent. Then they start riding to the Urnia but not before quickly resting at the grace located at Stormhill Shack, which is very important. Once in Leonia, they rest at the closest grace they can find, which is Leonia Highway South. Here is where they perform the wrong warp. First, they use the Memory of Grace. The game then starts the teleportation process. The game says, okay, the last site of grace was Leonia Highway South, which is in the region Leonia. After it has loaded Leonia, it then scans the list of spawn coordinates and finds the one that matches with Leonia Highway South. 
So far, everything has been smooth sailing. It has the region, it's matched the coordinates, everything is fine and dandy, and we are ready to rock. But hold on a minute, the player then uses the map and says they want to go to Stormhill Shack. Again, this doesn't start a new process, but the game does try to send you to the new coordinates. In this case, Stormhill Shack is in Limgrave. So it updates the region the player is going to, which is now Limgrave. Then, the game is about to update the coordinates and try to find a match. But uh-oh, the original teleportation process is now finished, and the game does not care if new coordinates have been confirmed. You are being sent somewhere. But where? The game has a bit of a problem now because the region you are going to has been updated to Limgrave, but the coordinates are still showing as Leonia Highway South, which is in the region Leonia. As the game cannot find a match within Limgrave, the game sends you to what we call the default spawn. Every single region has its own default spawn, and it's likely the very first set of coordinates in the previously mentioned list of possible spawns. In the case of Limgrave, the default spawn sends you underneath the map, falling to your death. So why would this be a spawn? We are currently unsure, but it's possible that it was a legitimate location at some point, but maybe the geography of the world was updated during development, and the list itself was never updated. In any case, we are now falling, with no other option but to quit out. You might think this is bad, but it's exactly what we want, as we will now perform the Unstable Ground Wrong Warp. One thing the game keeps track of is the last place the character was standing on what we call stable ground. This is always updated and the information is used so that the game knows where to put you when you load up the game. To show it in action, if you jump off a cliff and quit out while falling, when you load back up, the player will spawn at the exact place they were when they lost contact with the ground. In most cases, this works just fine, but in other cases, things can get a bit messed up. Again, Elden Ring is kind of broken. Whenever you use the Memory of Grace, it just straight up deletes the coordinates for the last stable ground you were on. Normally, this shouldn't even matter because when you teleport, you end up on stable ground again and the information is immediately updated. But there are sites of grace where even that doesn't happen. For example, when you teleport to the Perfumer's Grotto, Site of Grace, it places you on unstable ground. So if you quit and load, you won't respawn there. So where would you respawn? Even though the game loses your coordinates, it does still remember the region that you were in the last time you were on stable ground. And because it has no coordinates, it again places you at the default spawn for that region. Let's go back to the first wrong warp used in the speedrun and see what happens. So we've done the first wrong warp, which sent us to the default spawn in Limgrave, which is underneath the map and not on stable ground, which is why the next wrong warp works. We then quit and reload the game. The exact coordinates for the last stable ground position are lost, but it still knows that we were in Leonia. So it sends us to the default spawn for that region, which luckily for us isn't under the map, but rather much further north, which is a lot closer to where we are going. Getting a bit further along is all well and good, but ultimately it's not very consequential. The wrong warp that has the biggest impact is the one in crumbling Farum Azula. The main dungeon is only accessible in the very late stages of the game, but at the Four Belfries, which is located in Leonia, you can teleport to a section of the dungeon that is otherwise cut off from the main section. This separate section would otherwise be useless, but we can use it to our advantage by performing an unstable ground wrong warp. This is because the separated section of the dungeon is located in the same region as the main section, and the default spawn location is also in the main section. So players first use the portal in Leonia to get to the separated section of the dungeon. The last known stable ground region and coordinates get stored into the game at this point. They then use a memory of grace, which both removes the stable ground coordinates and starts sending them to the last side of grace, which at this point in the speedrun was at the Four Belfries in Leonia. They then map Wrong Warp to Stormhill Shack in Limgrave, which places them at the default spawn for that region, which again is under the map. 
As they are falling, they quit and reload the game. The game doesn't have coordinates, but it knows that the last region the player was on stable ground in was crumbling Farum Azula. It then puts the player at the default spawn location inside that region, which is in the main dungeon section, which gives direct access to the final boss. Using wrong warps, a player can reach the end boss in around 10 minutes. The only issue is that when you reach it, you are far too weak to kill the final boss. This is why speedrunners must then spend the next half of the speedrun collecting and upgrading the necessary weapons before they can actually beat the game. In this video, I just wanted to focus on the wrong warp, but if you are interested in learning the rest of the speedrun, and there is a ton to cover, please let me know by commenting and subscribing to the channel. And yes, I do know that there is a technique called zipping that lets players beat the game in under 20 minutes, but as yet, this isn't fully understood and may be hardware dependent and is therefore in a separate category. So I will wait to see what happens before investigating that particular trick. Big thanks to the players in the Elden Ring and Dark Souls Discord for answering my questions and helping me learn. As always, thank you so much for watching you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.